Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Share with Shawty Show. I'm laughing because I was having technical difficulties <laughs> and I look at my phone <laughs> and Mika says, maybe we should skip it. <laughs> You're like the true <laughs> producer, Mika. You're like, okay, we've, we've already done this twice. Like, <laughs> you, you don't need an opening. <laughs> What's up, homie? How you living? Yo, I'm all right. I'm all right. Good. What does your shirt say? Love yourself. Oh, you you gotta love yourself. Yes. To love others. It's important. It's important. Very important. How was your yep, week? Yep. Busy. Like I'm mad it's Monday already. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just how I feel. <laughs> Yeah, I was, uh, when I woke up this morning, I was like a little confused. I really did think it was Sunday again, like for a hot moment, but you know, it is what it is. It's, um, we are putting the house on the market. So yes, there's a lot going on. Are you going to stay in the neighborhood? Not this neighborhood in the area. Yes. Mm. Are you looking to go big? You need more space. Bigger, mm-hmm. bigger, bigger. Yes, <laughs> big. Maybe I'm not at the stage for big, big yet, but you know, bigger. It's all relative, though. You know, whatever God wants to bless me with. That's what. That's I how I say it. It sounds cliche, but I really do mean it. No, because because he really he really knows he knows he knows what we need and. And he knows what I desire. And I feel, and notice I said, I like nobody else's opinion matters right now, but um, I, I feel like I'll get what I'm looking for. <laughs> yep. How was your week? My week was good. I can't complain. I mean, you know, I need to stop watching the trial, but other than that, uh, oh my can't do it. Can't do can't. it. I can't. Are they in deliberation right now, though? The prosecution hasn't even rest yet. Oh, okay. So somebody gave me false information. Six-week trial. That's what it feels like it's about to be, because I'm pretty sure the defense will be about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Prosecution might rest on Friday. Probably two weeks of defense testimony. Mm -hmm. All because of due process. Yep. And I just have I, I just have mixed feelings about that. So I do have one question because you know uh, representation matters and I know black folks have their whole thing about, you know, voting and stuff like that, but it's is bigger than just voting, right? When you're in a courtroom and you're not being tried amongst your peers, that matters. So yes. How do they pull out these people for jury duty? 
your vote, your voter, vote. your voting exactly. registration card. Right. And a lot and, of people don't know that and they don't make that connection. And they're still like, well, oh, well, then I'm not missing anything. But I do think it is important, you know, for somebody <clears throat> to. It's about fairness, you know, and influence and culture. So. Right. What does the jury look like right now? Um, I want to say, I know it is two Black men, mm-hmm. like six white people mix. Like, I don't know gender. Right. Two yeah, Black gotcha. men, two Black men, another person of color, I don't know what their their ethnicity is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Got it. And then we have another shooting yesterday. Right. Right. And then we still show up. And then we still, you know, we still show up. Like, I think I, like, about an hour ago, I posted, like, 18, only 18, 18 things I'm tired of. Mm Mm-hmm. And then I, and yeah, we, and then we work through that. We work through the tired. And we heavy times. The, the heaviness. We work through all of that. Right. That's why I'm big on celebrating. For real. Yes. For real. It's it's important because this stuff will, you know, it's like an undertow to pull you under if you let it. So my yeah. boundaries are: I cannot watch you know, those types of things. I still haven't seen the George Floyd video and I refuse to watch it. Uh, My my sensitivity and my memory is set up a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. So I don't want to do it. And I don't watch all these other shows and series and movies, either thems, the us's, the you's and the the, uh, whatever. Like I can't do them either. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little bit over you know, that particular part of our history being glorified. I'm yeah, over it. It's something about n- knowing the history of just lynching and how, you know, they would get, they would get dressed up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, but think about what that does to your psyche. They would get, they for, would get, for people like, like us in this country show. right now. And they would have food. Mm-hmm. How does that help me now though? What is it doing? What am I, th- how do I compute that? I think I'm, I'm, this is like a legit question. What role does that play in my psyche? How I feel about myself, my confidence, my, you know, my security, my drive, my motivation, my intrinsic motivation. How does all of that help? There are very few people that are, you know, intrinsically motivated there are very like I feel like it does more harm than good and when you feel overwhelmed by something like that what does what happens when we feel overwhelmed like you just kind of stop yeah yeah you shut down you, right well we're living in I can't shut down right now it's not going to help me to shut down right there's also you know there are no there's not enough conversation about how to process all that information either. Right. You know, a lot of people are looking at it like, oh, it's just a show. It ain't a show. You can log on to social media and see how it's affecting people. It's not just a show at all. And it wasn't created just to be a show either. Right. So me personally, those are a part of my boundaries. I don't need to watch stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, I walk around like and I'd be ready to slap you know, somebody like, and that's for real. You know, yeah. I have a friend like that will not watch and, and, you know, won't watch things that are like violence, especially sexual violence. Yeah, it's true. Like, that stuff is triggering. It's, yeah, that's like, like, I don't, I don't even know why. Like, I'm big on spirits too. I feel like spirits exist. <laughs> They're here. I don't want it. <laughs> just says, I don't want it. I don't need it, right? If it Jesus ain't feeding, w- it'll be Jesus wouldn't want, want that. that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. If it's not gonna feed joy yeah. and spark joy, right, and and like- help me 
build a legacy, yeah. I don't want it. I wrote that. I wrote. I'm aware post. of my history. <laughs> I, I wrote my post, and then I was like, you know what? I need to focus on whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is trustworthy, whatever is exactly noble, right. Mm-hmm. Like that's in that's in the Bible for a reason, and you know, you know. I mean, I'll give it to you this way. How many Holocaust movies are there? And nobody throwing it down their faces, right? Jewish people are not making Holocaust movies every freaking year. They are aware of their history. They're focused on something different. Let's go. That's <laughs> it. Let's go. Enough is enough. It's not enough. Hi, Vivian. Do you think that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Hey, lady. Oh, Aisha says, hey, ladies. So you don't have to watch the replay. <laughs> you can just get in where you fit in. Yvette, Yvette Denise McGill said, amen. She can't, she has boundaries too. She talked, she said that when you were talking mm-hmm. about you can't watch things. Mm-hmm. Amy Morrison said, how are you, ladies? We're good. Thanks, Jennifer, for watching. I don't know if you is watching. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, do you remember what the wellness whisper was for last week? I wrote it down. I can't rely on my memory no more. It's too much happening. It is too much. Say that one more time <laughs> it's for my too memory. Much happening. <laughs> it's too much happening. If it's not on my calendar, no. it does not exist. I ain't write it down, <laughs> Shawnee. I don't see it. Oh, let me see. Uh oh. I don't know. I really, I truthfully don't know. I think I, I probably did write it down, but just not in the right spot. Right. <clears throat> oh, I had typed it. I typed it in the comments. That's what I did. That's where I went wrong. I typed it in the comments. The comments of last week's show. Of last week's show. Yep. I typed it in the comments when um, and I had also typed um our guest her website information like in the same because remember like her name I asked her how she spelled her name and then right I, do, do, do. yep that's where it is so so it's there for reference let me see I'm in the comments dang we had a lot of comments <laughs> we did we did yeah we did oh lord replied uh My little mini me is not feeling well. Y'all might see her little puff oh. pop up in the, in the frame. Oh. <laughs> Allergy season is crazy. Uh, uh, the wellness whisper for last week was get up. It was in reference yeah. to Jesus Easter. getting up. That's right. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> did you get up, Mika? I did. I got up. What'd you do? I think maybe this week it should be go to sleep. no 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 i um so did i i'm sure i shared it before right transparency i've been i've been as i approach my 40s you know there's a lot to think about nah i ain't got five years i got two i got two years um there is a lot to think about and i am like hell bent on retiring at 50. Now, you know, growing up, I don't remember anybody in my family having conversations about wealth, finances, money, because all three of those are different. Any type of long-term plan. I don't remember that, right? It was just, you retire and you get social security. Well, what nobody had told me was Social Security only carry you so far, all right? And everybody I know (laughs) or knew at that time, you know, they also had to rely on state benefits, Mm -hmm. okay? So I'm looking at it like this. I got my first job when I was 14. Like my first actual job, not paid under the table. I worked at Dunkin' Donuts, when I was 14 and a half, I've been working for a long time. 
And unlike running for Jesus, I am tired. (laughs) I'm tired. I can't see. It actually breaks my heart when I see like my older family members struggling. Yeah. Right. Knowing that they put in the work throughout their years. It also really hurts, you know, when I don't like just the idea of I would have to work till, you know, 65, 75, like that hurts too. So that's my fuel and motivation. So the way I got up, I had my uh, my one year annual review with my financial advisor. I also had a hard conversation with my family about like enough is enough, basically. You know, nobody is getting any younger. We have a seven-year-old. I have six-figure student loan debt. I would never want that for my child. And I feel like if she had to take out student loans, I didn't do something. I didn't do what I was called to do. That's my personal feelings. This has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm not judging anybody else or nothing. I feel personally the gifts and the talents, the skill set, the calling that I have on my life, there's no reason for my child to have student loan debt. Right. Period. And if that happens, I messed up. The amount of anxiety that comes along with big debt, like it's a real thing. I don't want that for her. I don't want that for, you know, for anybody that I care about for real. But I can't be in everybody's pocket. All I can do is handle mine. And so that's how I got up. We put together a serious, you know, plan. We got contingencies in place. We measured where I am now, you know, compared to this time last year, which I felt like it was worse. <laughs> but it wasn't it was you know it was it was a lot better I have a uh what do you call that an emergency account right yes you hear ahead. you hear that but nobody really says you know what what how much should you have in your emergency account right like mm-hmm. so having a financial advisor is um that was money right for real like that's you get to see how how the rich folk do it how the wealthy right. folk do it and and in doing that you know I'm also just kind of compelled to work even harder in my community because there are things that we simply do not have access to and then so when you don't have access to something again we're talking about you know these messages that get sent to us over and over again they make a difference when you don't have access to something you wind up telling yourself well, I don't need to value that. That's the biggest trick. So that's good. There was a lot of things that I didn't see growing up, but I knew better. Right. Right. I, for real, like Saved by the Bell, right, was one of the shows because I was a latchkey kid. So the TV <laughs> was my babysitter. <laughs> Me too. Lisa that. Turtle was the only black kid in Hollywood, right? right? Like think about all the kids that went to <laughs> that went to uh Bayside. She was like the only black kid that you saw there. Right. And her mother was a doctor, right? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Her mother was a doctor. I forgot mm-hmm. what her dad did, but he was like the credit card giver. Here you go, baby. Right. <laughs> like I don't I think he was a lawyer maybe or maybe that was Zach's dad. I don't know. It focused a lot more on her mom. But I remember just the different things that the children, you know, like their family makeup, right? And how they got to this elite kind of school and stuff like that. And I just remember saying like, I'm gonna be Lisa Turtle. I'm gonna be <laughs> Lisa Turtle, I'm gonna have money. Like, I'm gonna get, my daddy gonna give me a credit card or I'm gonna do it for my kid, right? Like that's, that for real, that's how I said it. So it was just like, this exists, but we also had family members that had like, you know, a mansion. Right. And that was huge for me. Like the first time I went to their house and they had a pool and they had a pool house and they had like two kitchens and they had like four levels and they had like 12 bedrooms. I was like, yo, I got to have this. <laughs> right. Got to get a plane. Got to get up. So yeah, that's how I got up. Taking care of my finances. I can't. Re- I, I don't. 
now I don't remember how I got up and I'm, <laughs> and I'm really mad right now because I the whole time you were talking I was like well, how did you get up this week and all I kept I'm not even gonna tell you what I was thinking because it's so superficial I'm looking at my face <laughs> and I got a new ring light nice I see the new background too yeah you know we was gonna get into that yeah got your marble effect happening yeah it's a little lot but like it doesn't go all the way over it's like, okay it's the three-quarter rule don't worry about it i need yeah. i need to adjust but i'm looking at my face the and rule i'm of like thirds <laughs> Shani, did you get the right color foundation that's what i was looking at my face and you I look sun-kissed I, okay it's we go with that yeah <laughs> it's okay I don't, I think I got the wrong thing. (laughs) (laughs) It happens. I got up and got the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. At least you don't look orange. Right. You know what? That's, that's a word. They had set me up with this Bobby Brown (laughs) foundation on a stick one time. Who did that? I look oompa loompa orange. And the girl, the girl at the counter. I you know I went to school with white girls and I I thought I could wear pink lipstick one time. You can. You just gotta find the right shade. We can wear anything. Yeah, not wet and wild though. We, not wet nah, and wild. cause they like fluorescent pink, shiny or pastel. And I was thirteen. I was gonna say that was probably she, like in the eighties, and, and nobody should have worn any it, of that pink. It totally was. <laughs> it was like eighty eight to be exact. Remember LA Gear? Yes. Yes. Was it that color pink? It was like yes. pink and orange was their logo. Probably. Yes. <laughs> and my mother was like, no. Yeah. I couldn't wear lipstick at 13. I couldn't either. So but it was oh. a no, it was a two, it was a twofold no. Well, see, that's why you had wet and wild, because you weren't supposed to have it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to try to color my lips with like Kool-Aid powder. I never did that. A lot of people did that. I never did that. Tracy was like, ma'am, if I see you with any color on that face that didn't come from the sun, we got a whole problem. I dyed my hair with peroxide one time because she wouldn't let me dye my hair either. And then one time, it was so funny. Okay, so one time, so there was one, it was like a couple other Black girls in my school, but they were much older than me. Mm -hmm. So when I was, you ever like, did you, you seem to be like goody two shoes. Did you like change your clothes when you got to school? No, I was a tomboy. I wasn't interested in that. I didn't, I didn't do that either, but I did put on makeup when I got to school. I don't know the, why. I think the raciest thing I did, <laughs> I would change out my, my jewelry. Cause my mom didn't like, like big flashy jewelry. Uh, Anything that she thought was going to bring male attention. She was like, no yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Like the red lipstick or red fingernail polish. And red is my favorite color. No, Can you imagine was, how devastated was, no. I was? I was like, but it's on my toes. Who can see it? So when I, cause I, and then my mother didn't wear makeup. My mother was not a makeup well, person. Either. So I yeah. didn't have. I, I would get guidance from older cousins mm-hmm. in the summertime, mm-hmm. but I didn't know how to put that stuff on, but it was so funny because an a, a older black girl, she was probably like three grades ahead of me. So she mm-hmm. probably was in 11th grade. I was in eighth grade and we was all in one school. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. She was like, so she saw me at lunch one day and she was like, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> and I was like, I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped wearing makeup. Oh, wow. I mean, did she I try stopped, to help I, you though? I, 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 did, I literally did not wear makeup again for like 12 years. I have questions. Yes. Was this student someone that you knew? Yes. Were you friendly? All, yeah. All like all the, you, you knew every, when you don't go to school with a lot of people that look like you, you're, you, you are, you are forced to be friends. Even that if was an untruth in my life. I went uh, to a fifth grade. That was not true for me. Really? Because I was an urban Black girl and the schools that I went to where I was one of the few, those Black girls were the Lisa Turtles and I would have been like the female A.C. Slater. 
Oh. Remember, AC was a little rough around the edges, yeah. right? Even though he yeah. came from military background, but right. but yeah, I still I still had a little too much Brick City in me. They was just like, oh my gosh, I'm from Morristown, you know? That's <laughs> that's how they talk. So, and I was like, yo, what's up? You right. know, y'all trying to meet at the bus stop? We just walked a whole mile. I was like, you walk to school? Your parents don't drive you? You don't have parents? I have a mother. <laughs> just that that was my middle school experience so no, we were all the black kids and me just I think I was too black blackity black black <laughs> <laughs> I was the one coming to school in the kente cloth and the mud cloth and they were well, just like it's not cloth. black history month I was like but I'm black I did I wore a kente cloth you know what do you call the thing this is it a stole on your graduation probably not yes uh-huh, uh-huh graduation uh-huh. robe is that a stole that is yes okay. it is uh-huh i wore a kinty cloth stole over mine because i was in when the- you graduated mm-hmm. yeah that's dope i wish i would have known where to find that stuff because i, I did and i graduated from like probably the whitest school in virginia <laughs> i graduated from marymount you know it's a old traditionally catholic school that sits at the top of the hill I think Rihanna yep. applied there. It's okay. It's a, Maybe I got not. an excellent no, it education. Was, it was a different but. Catholic school, all girls school, Georgetown something, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, just those experiences are great, though. Do you feel yeah. like you would be different if you did not have those experiences? No, I like there's so many so many great experiences of small town living and understand and I I personally feel like you need to be able to be around other absolutely absolutely like you so I I don't think I would honestly because I we're gonna dig into that a little bit later you you disagree I ain't say nothing what you say I mean, I think you should be able to, it, it, it's easier for me to <laughs> compare it to my friends or family. Like my mm-hmm. um, former husband had never, never worked with anybody other than black people, his whole adult career. I really? found that fascinating. Yeah, I'm yeah. amazed by that. Like, that's what's up. That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I don't know because he's lacking some skills. Something. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, conflict. Because <laughs> then, when you can't be like 40 coming into spaces with people that don't look like you it, on either side. On either side. The, the fact that that's even a conversation piece is why the u.s is a problem agreed just saying how many other races and cultures have that as an issue i don't know deep mika (laughs) (laughs) is that who i am this monday (laughs) oh yeah you're getting deep Let me bring Miss Vivian into the conversation. <laughs> Our special guest tonight is Vivian Grafton, mother of three. I asked her what did she, you know, what was the one thing she wanted me to tell y'all? And she said her heart for women of all walks of life, especially those that have been held captive by their own decisions and actions. And her mission I statement. I, I love that too. I also love the fact that she has a mission statement because I don't have a mission statement. <laughs> you know, I got a company, theme song, but company, maybe I need my own mission statement. No, I like you need it, a mission babe. statement. Yeah. Her, her mission statement is to live a life that mm-hmm. is encouraging to the discouraged, hopeful to the hopeless, and mm-hmm. a breath of fresh air to those that may be suffocating from life. I love it. Ooh. Welcome, Vivian uh, Grafton, to all the show sorts tonight. of imagery. Yeah, I like that was that. deep. I would just tell you, uh, I, this is why I love the show because we get so many women, and I want to <laughs> like take a piece of each one and then be like, I'm every woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Vivian, go give me a mission statement. 
right. somebody gonna give me some faith somebody gonna talk about some joy <laughs> choosing joy the stuff to work with yeah all yeah. good stuff <laughs> Vivian tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words so in my own words um I am a woman uh, well okay so you you already know that I'm I'm a mother um, I am married. I can tell you that at this latter part of my life, I'm closer to 60, I will say that, than I've ever been. And I am finally feeling like I'm coming into my own. Like I have been doing um, pretty much all my life what everybody else wanted me to do. And I am mm -hmm. finally doing V. Um, and so that's- that's okay, V. Did you say doing V? doing did. oh that's a that's a tv show that's it is it, is it? it no i'm speaking it into existence oh oh <laughs> i'm so deep i missed it <laughs> yeah doing uh, the i mean what i would watch that you know i think i like that title too I, yes so, yeah it's yours it, it <laughs> <laughs> like it wouldn't flow it doing s doing m that don't even nah, sound v, right v makes sense yeah v makes sense doing this yeah. <laughs> it took me a while a very long time to get here but i, I wonder but why that is why does it why why is it is it the cliche that women are nurturers that we always have yeah. to think of other people before ourselves yeah why do we get to and you know, by the grace of God, you've gotten there. But why do we? Why does it take us so long to get there? I think that is it, Shani. I think um, we get oh, and let's don't even talk about like. Um, so we have children. Um, if we're married, and I think just by culture, you know, culture just says that we can do it all. And you know what? We normally, to be honest, we really can. We can multitask where um, males really can't, like they're not really too good at that. And so we end up doing everything for everybody. And then we go on down that road for however long. And then we eventually wake up. It's like we have an epiphany and we really realize, okay, you know what? This is, there has to be more, you know? And that's really um, where pretty much where I always come from, you know, with dealing with other women is when you can sense that there's like a little bit of a disconnect from what they're doing and what they really want to do. It's like, okay, what's the root of that? Is there something more that you should be doing or what? So, um, so yeah, I think because we're nurturers and we have a hard time letting go. <laughs> so um, we want to be nurturers and we are nurturers, but then there comes a season where we really have to back off and back up. And sometimes we're not too good at that because it's just innately in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think that so. what you're saying, what I'm hearing is, it sounds like you you figured out how to how to put boundaries in place. Y'all get tired know, of hearing that right. word by the end of this year. Yeah. And you have to have boundaries. Underuse. Yeah. Oh my God. You have it's to underuse in our culture. And yeah. black culture. I'm gonna be more yes. specific. Yes. Yeah. We yes. use that word, especially with your black mama. She like, I'm sorry, you want to put what in place? Right. <laughs> right. Boundaries. Jesus ain't uh -huh. have boundaries. So no. <laughs> that's that's usually what the answer that I got. Right. If Jesus ain't do it, you can't have it. It's like, but he did. <laughs> he did. He had boundaries. I promise you he did. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have boundaries. And we have to, I think we also have to realize that even if we can do it all, do we really should, you know, or I did, that was grammatically wrong, y'all. But, you know, the question. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I can do it all. Should I really, you right. know, should I really? And that's right. Like, what's the benefit in that? Exactly. Right. And I think we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last week, about yeah, we could do all things through Christ, but all at the same time. Exactly. 
Nor nor Jack said Jesus did have boundaries. Yes, he yes, did. He did. He was not, Jesus wasn't playing. He didn't come to play with us. We covered that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus was a he was a G for real. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let me add, I'm sorry. Go oh ahead. no, go ahead. I was just curious, Ms. V, like, because I just sound real sassy in my head. <laughs> So, Ms. V, <laughs> when you, so you say you're just now, you know, kind of getting into doing you, mm-hmm. was there a, a, you know, and uh, what, what triggered that onset? Like what, what brought that about? Well, um, I think when I finally, re- so I have three sons and all of them mm-hmm. are born. And, um, you know, I, I just remember getting to a place like, okay, now, now what do I do? You know, okay. all gone. Two of them are married. One mm-hmm. is, you know, on his own. Now, what do I do? And okay. yeah, it was like, I, I had to really quiet myself down, come out of my emotions and really go back, you know, to be perfectly honest, really go back to the source. It's like, okay, you know what, God? I'm in this job that I know you open the door for me, but mm-hmm. I'm not really, um, I know I'm effective in it, or let, let me not even say effective. I know that I'm good at it, but I'm not feeling fulfillment in this thing anymore. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. my kids are gone. I have granddaughters, but they're grandkids. Nice. You know? Mm-hmm. So, um, and I'm still, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm closer to 60, but it's like, I'm not trying to raise anybody else's kids. So, mm-hmm. um, it's like, God, you gotta, I know there's something more that I should be doing, but I need you to help me get to that because I know what my passion is, but what do I do? You know, what, what okay. do I do with all of it? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so to, it took me really going and looking, like almost stepping out of myself and mm-hmm. do some things that God has showed me years ago, like maybe okay. 20, 30 years ago, um, and picking that back up and realizing that if he said it then, it doesn't change. Um, right. And the only thing that's going to cause me to walk in that is to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of times, and that's something that I tell a lot of people now, it's like, don't worry about where to start at just start you know the littlest of anything regarding any area of life Mm -hmm. is on progress Mm -hmm. so so yeah a lot of honest get up question you know what and that's it you got to get up you got to get you got to take it from thinking about it writing it down you know affirmations are a big thing now Mm -hmm. anything that you go on (laughs) social media every our affirmations okay yeah we can speak it all day long but what are you doing with what you're speaking because right. it's just speaking still not gonna make it come to pass you gotta put some action <laughs> with what you're saying. exactly so. absolutely your topic was living free we were um, yeah. supposed to talk about that and so how how do you do that like what is that what does that mean so so what that means really and this is like this is this is my heart right here. Living free from expectations from other people. Okay. So mm-hmm. I'm, an, I'm an only child. Me too. <laughs> it is national only child day today. Oh my, is it really? Yes. <laughs> Buy yourself yeah. something pretty, Vivian. I will. I'm going to. <laughs> my daughter is an only child. Get, oh, wow. A gift. What are you going to give yeah. her? We're special. Oh, I'll ask her what she wants. <laughs> Yeah, I remember saying. being an only child. That was, yeah. was good times. <laughs> yeah. But um, my dad was in the military, so he retired military. Now I'm, okay. I'm a female. Of, and, oh, hold on, y'all. Somebody trying to call. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so of course, you know, he's he called me baby girl. It's like, baby girl, um, what you going to do when you graduate? It's like, I don't know. Go to school. Well, I think you need to go in the military. It's like, I don't, I don't want to do that, daddy. Um, mm-hmm. He tried out of the Navy. And so all I could think of was me being on a ship in the middle of an ocean. He's like, no, <laughs> do that. And yeah. so he waited a little while. He came back and said, well, you know what? Maybe you should be a stewardess. Now he thought for whatever reason, mm-hmm. it's like that. first, 
I don't need you to try to figure out what I'm going to do. You know, you can make suggestions, but I don't want to be a story to see that. I don't want to be flying, you know, from here to there and not really having a place on my own. I, I didn't want to do that. But what ended up happening is um, when I was 20, I believe I was 25 or so, um, I was living on the East Coast, got hired in a tax accounting firm, a public accounting firm. And mm -hmm. since I didn't have a career path at that point, they just decided, well, you know what, Vivian's good with numbers. And since she doesn't have a career path, let's just go ahead and train her to be a tax accountant. And I was young. So I didn't know any better. It's like, okay, you know what? If that's what we're going to do, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. To this day, like 30 something years later, I'm still in that field. Now I don't do tax returns anymore. Now I'm a technical trainer. And that's really when I woke up because okay. I realized that, okay, you know, this may be something that I'm good at. I love teaching because I am teaching. Um, I'm teaching clients how to use our software, but I don't, I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, this is cool. Um, I know how to entertain it. Well, not entertain, but I, you know, I'm not intimidated by audiences or anything like that because we do conferences. So, but I don't like what I'm teaching. Like I want to mm -hmm. teach something that's going to really empower, um, that's going to really inspire, that's going to make people think and cause them to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. with themselves and to realize that and it, it doesn't even have to be career related it can be regarding anything right where they have allowed somebody to speak into them something that they should be doing maybe something maybe the way they should be looking um, it could be from their culture from the way that they were raised I mean from what we see in social media from what we see on tv um even even if we take it to the church, like what they say on how we should, how we as women, you know, how to, how in some instances they box us in because we're women. Um, mm -hmm. That's not God, that, that's man's expectation. And so we have to start really stepping away from those expectations because for one, it's unfair. A lot mm -hmm. of times, never realistic and how are you going to put an expectation on me and not consult with me about that expectation <laughs> you know <laughs> mm -hmm. it's my life yeah so, mm -hmm. so yeah I think it's interesting how we can get boxed in especially in a career that you're just doing temporarily right then you then you wake up one day and be like I this is not what I wanted to do right right I remember like I was on the cusp of that. Like I went to college for one thing, didn't go into that field. And then I just needed a job because like Mika said, the the the, the student loan debt was coming, <laughs> right? So it got real, it got real fast, right? And then, you know, I, I had children early, got married early, had children early, but then found myself early on that marriage was ending and, whatever. So mm -hmm. I was doing things for survival. And I yeah. remember on the, on the break of, or the brink, I was like, that's mm -hmm. the wrong word. It's, it's, <laughs> I was on the brink of going down this path of retail management and knowing that would require at least three weekends a month. Right. That's a 50 evening, hour work week. Evenings. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you're not going to get far. I mean, it's a decent living, but mm -hmm. it's not, it wasn't what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. right? And I, I had at the time a very, at the time I didn't realize that her mindset was so singular, right? Because mm -hmm. for her, she had overcome so many obstacles right she was a teenage mom and you know and now she had risen into you know she started out as a counter girl and moved up and into management and she was on her way to like district manager if she who are you referring to the boss this boss that Got you. Mm -hmm. i was working for 
at a your manager uh, we don't have a boss your manager yeah at a retail okay thank you thank you mm-hmm. you know <laughs> language no matters boss. it does yeah. i don't i don't have a boss god know, that would be it yeah thank you yeah anyway i say all that to say she would how she would rally her employees was through fear and she would say <sighs> mcdonald's is hiring as if to say mm. McDonald's would be less than this place. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right? It was a pharmacy. But I was like, <laughs> and so I would tell people <laughs> the next time she say that to you, you should say they start in $2 more. And they have, Listen, and that's they something have that people options. don't know. And they have stock options. <laughs> right. Don't sleep on McDonald's. Right. And management right. training and programs. You go into management, <laughs> they help you get a franchise. Please don't exactly. sleep on, please don't sleep on McDonald's. Right. Right. And so, but 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 me knowing that, me knowing mm-hmm. that 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 really was not a diss, but she was using mm-hmm. it, it was like the psychological warfare right. that she was giving right. to people that didn't know. And that's yeah. when I knew that it was time to roll out. Like that's what, like I was on the brink of integrity I because I had, yeah. I, I I was in management and I couldn't go any higher unless I became an assistant manager. I was like, oh mm-hmm. no, y'all not taking my, like I, I knew, <laughs> at, I knew at 25, 26 that I, that I, I wanted a quality of life yeah. differed from retail management. I still didn't know what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. but I knew it wasn't that. Right. right. And sometimes we get complacent you're right? absolutely yeah. we safe. We sit and and sit, we stay it's safe stay, there. Yeah, safe. Yeah. But like, but, I have to be honest. In the past seven, eight years, safe has like I have not played it safe, and I've experienced so much. No, you haven't, Shawnee. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. I haven't. It's a wonderful thing, though. It's admirable. I, I love not it. Play the same. I really do. Like, wow. I remember I was like, yo, wh- wh- where's the next check coming from? Like, just like being an entrepreneur, be like, what? Right. Like, Can we talk you- about the faith walk that that is Ooh. to rely on your own business Ability. income is a major faith walk? Listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if you've got, if you've ever applied for a government job. But they have what's called KSAs, mm-hmm. skills, knowledge, and aptitude, aptitude or ability, mm-hmm. aptitude. But it's like, it's aptitude, essay, yeah. like es- essays, right? Do you know that's yes. in Exodus? No. It's that, y'all, whoever is watching, find, find that scripture. Oh, wow. I'm not a Bible scholar, but it's in Exodus, yo. And it says, God will give you skills, knowledge, and abilities. Yes, wow. The daggone KSAs for the government is biblical, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I'm not really surprised by that. Though. I'm not surprised by it either. Yeah, but the fact right. that is like, come on now, that's yeah. telling me right there that everything that we ha- that we need for for anything we already have. We got it. It's in we us. Are, it's in us. Yeah. We got to, yes, yes, and and I strongly believe that you have to tap into that. I agree. For freedom. Yeah. I, you want to live free? You got to tap into the gifts that God gave you. Absolutely. And it doesn't I necessarily. Huh? Miss Viv. It doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is going to be an entrepreneur. No, absolutely. But you, you can... should be tapped. Just like you said, Shani, you, you have to. Yeah. I mean, you have because it's there. And, and one thing that I have to realize too, you guys, is that. The gifts and the talents that God has dropped inside of me or placed inside of me is not necessarily for me. Um, I benefit. I feel like, yeah. From It's really for those that it will touch, those that it can change, those, the people, the lost that don't know. Um, All right. The difference even in me performing whatever my skill set is. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, So, yeah, absolutely. Why are Absolutely. women important? Why are you? Why do you have a heart for women? I mean, because I love women too. But what black black women are a lot. <laughs> we, we are Shawnee. 
are. I, I have. I don't I have, have that experience. You don't. Black people, black women are. I love y'all. I love. Or it could be a matter of you know. I look at it a little bit differently. Yeah. I have experienced that. My 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 big my biggest joys and my biggest pains have been with black women. Mine too. I mean, because I'm I'm black. I mean, what, I mean, it's not because I, I love so hard. Yeah. And I and and it's just this like I want us to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. May I ask you a question? Because I'm gonna play the other side. Yes. Okay. Were you doing that same work with a member of another race? Like, what do you have to compare it to when you say some of my biggest joys and pains come from working with Black women? Oh, you're have talking you done to me. That? Yeah, yes. have you done that same work Absolutely. with women of other races? Yes. Okay. All right. I mean, white but, women hey, look. hurt me too. <laughs> I'm not going to Right, right. I'm just curious, I, you know. Yes, I've been hurt by I've been hurt by women. Period. I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna put a race on it, but I'm just saying okay. that th- that there is a complexity of being a black woman. There oh, is. most definitely. And we most are definitely. we are we are held to this higher a whole standard. different standard, whole, whole different, different standard. Whole different standard. It ain't in the book, but yet, it's not written. But yet, but yet, are treated the least of we're the least of 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 them in right. so many regards there you right. go and then a double minority and we and 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 a lot of times we do as a whole i'm not going to say i'm not going to say everybody but we do tend to live in a scarcity mindset and you see that a lot in the church especially what was we talking about Huh? Spirit of poverty, right? Remember, yeah. I mentioned that. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep and, on because it's gone somewhere. And so when you, and so when, I will tell you this from a professional standpoint. Mm-hmm. All of my promotions, or lack, first my lack of promotions, mm-hmm. was was due to the fear of a black woman. My my lack of promotion, the fear of a black woman. What like of being taken woman, advantage of? Of a black woman not releasing her power because she had she had uh, I see what she you're had saying. Got okay. into that state and mm-hmm. did not want to release power. Did not want to teach. Did not what felt threatened. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Got it. Got it. Mm-hmm. Sabotage work. Not work. Not being. Um, it's one thing, okay, because here's the thing, Mika. It's, I expect, well, I sh- you shouldn't have to expect, but I expect, because I it, it, it happened when working on teams where mm-hmm. people who did not do, that's why I hate team projects. Because it's always it. one person that does not have equal, the, 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 right. they, don't, they don't bring their, their best selves to the project. Right. Right. And then when it's time to get all the glory and accolades, they the first one. Right? Yeah. Okay. I've expected that with the mediocre white guy. (laughs) Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. That's an I've expected that. But Mm -hmm. when it comes to But the first time it happened to me with the black woman, I was I was hurt. I was hurt. Our expectations are different. Yeah. So that's, that's what why I, mean I asked that I question. Say, yeah. yeah. So it's not the same measurement. It's not on the same scale. We have different expectations right. from our own people. Yes. We do. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear you. But that's should we? That. You know, we mm-hmm. do. We do have different expectations, but really, should we? Because I'm telling you, I, I try do. not to say should. That'll get you in trouble, won't it? Yes. And then, you know, society has made it so we compete against each other. Yes. All right, now. Listen, I'm glad you said that. It's really funny. It's interesting because, I don't know, one of the five million groups that I got added into on Facebook, 
there was a <laughs> thing i meant is it just me i like every other day it's like you've yeah. been at it i don't even know you what is this group <laughs> anyway <Right>. i saw this <laughs> there was a there was a comment uh i don't even remember what the original post was about but basically the commenter like took the words out of my mouth it was why do we as black people always have to have a favorite right why do we get into this comparison thing right brandy monica all right, right. you know i don't know prince mj whatever right. i'm just throwing out you know some of your historical things right. out there it was just like can't we isn't there room for both yes is. and there is room for both yeah we are i always tell people look i'm complex <laughs> if if you are one dimensional i'm probably not gonna be your cup of tea and i'm totally okay with that right we don't have to always choose one or oh. the other uh -huh. i do believe that there is room for all of it <laughs> you know what i'm saying or a lot of it there's right. room right. for a lot of it. So with that being said, though, I have learned to, I've kind of reshaped expectations into, because I'm a very passionate person. And so, of course, I want to see my people win, right? And it doesn't mean that I want to see anybody else lose. Let's get that straight. Right. Because you don't have to. This is not one of those types of, you know, this, this not that's not or. what life is right. because I win, you lose. It's not what that means. Right. Okay. Like, right. let's be clear about that. Right. And right. so, because I understand historically and culturally, you know, we didn't, we ain't had no head start. The no. race was gone for a, a whole long time before we even got in, in there. The game. Right? right. Okay. And then when we got in there, that came without conditioning and everything else. Right. So we just had to you know, sprint without without even right. getting the dad going stretching right. in. No spring training, stretch. no nothing. Ain't no time. <laughs> exactly. To exactly. Right. And so because of that, yeah, I go hard, but also because I understand where the deficiencies lie. I manage my expectations a little bit differently and I just try to meet people where they are. Yes. I'm not going to lie to you and say that when I put myself into somebody, if I feel that you just missed it, I'm not going to be disappointed because I am. Cause I'm just like, right. Ooh, you were supposed to win. You were supposed to do that. You are not supposed to be in debt. You are not supposed to be this, you know, like, no, that's how I feel. Ah! That is what I want to do. That is how I feel. However, I do, I pray for the grace. <laughs> I pray for grace because I feel like that's how God feels. Yeah. When he's working with us, right? He's just like, no, my child, you are right. not supposed to be struggling. <laughs> you are not listening to right. what I'm telling you to do. Absolutely. I put it in my word right there for you. And you, you don't mess that up, but I'm gonna still love you. Right. I'm gonna love you back to life. <laughs> right right i still got grace and mercy thank right. jesus <laughs> right that's how i look at it thank god for jesus so i'm going to extend that grace and i'm gonna just work even harder because we need it right and i don't right. think there's any other way to say it it exists the way that it is we need it the most mm -hmm. what'd you say earlier shani and so many know. words Huh? Black women are the least protected thing on this yes. planet. Yes, that's what I said. We don't matter to nobody, right? And that's why I, I that's why my, I, like, I feel like Vivian, like my heart, like I'm always going to support. Yes, yes. exactly. But regardless, right? Yeah, I, right. Like, it's and it's like, not no, a you can do no wrong. It's right, no. Because there's a difference. Yeah. People need to understand that, right? You can right. love, you can you can feed into you can do a lot of these different things and understand when you understand human condition Absolutely. it doesn't mean that you're perfect it doesn't mean that you're right. perfect at all right. yes yep that's, that's that is my uh i'm off my soapbox oh no i wanted to get in because we're a little bit over time but we did start because yes. i was so pressed to have the the, the theme song play it's all good. I mean, look, um, that's your theme song. It's all you good. Know, I mean, I'm trying to get my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs>
Maybe we should play it on the outro too then. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but Vivian has a conference coming up. We're going to sponsor somebody. Uh, can you tell us about, I didn't even ask you if the conference was like online. I no. Was, oh, it's face to face. It is face to face. Okay. Um, in the DFW area. DFW okay. area. So. Can you tell well, us a little who, bit about- Where is that for the people that don't know? That, yeah, that, that don't know letters. Before, people that don't know letters. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Dallas, Thank Fort you. Worth, Texas. So yes, okay. <laughs> um, I think we've titled it "Renewed, Refresh, Restored." Um, okay. I have two speakers, and um, come as you are. Tickets are already on sale. Your ticket does cover brunch or lunch. Um, we're gonna have giveaways and. It is going to really, we we are really expecting a move of God. We really are. The pandemic mm-hmm. um, or the worst of it in 2020. And so um, just pulling women together to be poured into and to, to um, hopefully at the end of the day, they can walk away and feel some burdens removed. And you know what? Get free. Get some. Right. Get freedom and realize that they can they can do whatever they want to do without you know just they can walk in the lane that God created them to walk in so if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area and you'd like to go to the conference and you're watching this or the replay yes you contact the Sharon with Shawnee show because we're gonna send you to the conference Yes. Oh, oh, to, it's oh you get a ticket, you get a ticket, you no, get a ticket. No, just one ticket. <laughs> just one, just one ticket. <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> the Lord. Speaking into existence, Shawnee. Yeah. It's coming. It's I, coming. I, I it's would, coming. Would, yes. I'm gonna be a title <laughs> spot. The Sharon with Shawnee show will be a title sponsor one day. <laughs> That's <Amen>. word, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you're in the Dallas Fort Worth, hey, or if you feel like getting on the plane, I mean, I don't there care. You go. But I need mm-hmm. you to go to the conference. Don't say mm-hmm. you're gonna go, and then you're gonna be like, "Oh, I didn't know I was in Dallas. I live in right. Alabama." Don't waste my ticket, hey, ma'am. <laughs> it's a lot of books I'm gonna have to sell. I know that's right. It's only <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a joke. But yes, people, people, people. No, nah, because right, right it's a value attached to that. So if you don't value it, don't take it. If just you because, don't, value, don't do it. Don't take it. Let right. me shout out some people before we get into. Um, um, while well, Vivian, I'm gonna need you to tell people where they can go. We didn't even talk about the book. Vivian is also an author. Yes, Global affirmations. So you, yes. um, how many affirmations did you put in the book? There's five. I wrote okay. five of them. All right. And why, and you talked, you spoke, we, you touched base on affirmations earlier, but why, why, yes. are, why do you feel affirmations are important to set the tone of the day or like? Yes, to absolutely set the tone of the day. And you know what? It really does go back to scripture, right? The Bible does say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Hey. Hey. In the New Testament, the death and life is in the power. So, you know, if how we think normally is what we say, um, or we say what we think. And a lot of times the things that we're saying are negative. And once it's out in the atmosphere, it's out there. And so, mm-hmm. um, and, and we can pray and ask God for that, for whatever we have spoken out, for it not to fall on good ground, that it don't prosper or anything like that. But if you can start changing your mindset and then speaking those things into existence, um, it works. I mean, I've only been doing it for a year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half. And I this conference was something that I spoke into existence. Um, mm-hmm. Being an author, And now I'm an author of two books and I have my own book that I have written. Um, Congratulations. So, yeah, so it works. And it's amazing because we hear it all about Christian lives, right? But it's like, I think it just takes some maturity to come along for us, for at least for me, to really Mm -hmm. understand, okay, you know what, Vivian, you can change your atmosphere by what you say. Literally. You can change your mind. You can trick your mind. I tell people that all the time. Like when Hello. I, you know, 
as a therapist, you know, some of my depressed clients, I remember when I was coming out, you know, to the end of my program, internship professor was like, who do you not want to work with? And I remember being like, people that have depression. <laughs> she was like, why? I'd be like, because sometimes I just want to jump on the table and be like, just say something different, right? So oh, I'm depressed and I'm sad. Yes, those are real things. But if you keep right. speaking it, what's going to change? Nothing. You right. can trick your mind by changing your words. Yeah, it's that amazing again. how God sets that up. That you again. can trick your mind by changing your words. Yes, I'm just saying. Yes, the whole thing. All it's true. Real. All true things. True indeed. Yes, Vivian. Oh, let me, me shout out some people. Nora okay. Jacks, thanks for That's watching. That's my homie. Aisha. That's my sister. That's your sister. And God, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was your <laughs> real sister. Nah, like, not my real sister. <laughs> she might as well be, though. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Fatima, thank you for watching. Mike Selden, thank you for watching. Bryant, thank you for watching. Darielle, thank you for watching. Hey, Ronnie, oh, my friend, thank you for watching. <laughs> I get excited when I be knowing the names of people. See, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We love you yeah. so much. Um, what was I getting ready to ask you? Your website. I, mean, I probably should have gave you that for your book, though. Pay people. Right. That was a good one. I like yeah. what you sent, though. Okay. Did you submit it already, though? Like, no, can I change it? You can if you want to. <laughs> I'm going to change it. 4.30 is the deadline. 4.30 All right. 4.30. Do it right now. Sorry, uh, Ms. V. Back to you. That's what's okay. the website that you uh where people can go to order tickets for the conference? Yes. To order so the to book. Get, order the book. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the website is free indeed. It's spelled F-R-E-E -E, capital N D E E D one dot com. Okay. Freed indeed. Say that one more time. So one can... free, indeed, not freed. No D on the oh, free. Oh, free. No, no. Yeah. Free. So free, F R E E N, the, the letter N, D, mm -hmm. D E E D, the number one dot com. Got so it. there's there's a page in there for the books, there's a page in there for our conference. Mika. You putting it in the chat or you want I me did. to do it? I'm in on the comments. Okay, all right. I just you. did. Yeah. Mika. Yeah. What's the wellness whisper for the week? I know, right? We ain't even do it. It's don't worry while you wait. Don't worry while you wait. Don't worry while you wait. Don't worry while you, you wait. That's turn a it song. Into, turn it into a rap, Mika, because you're a rapper. <laughs> I am. How about we do that next Monday? I have no energy. I promise you. Right. <laughs> it's all good. Vivian, ah. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on tonight. I appreciate you. Um, even if someone from the show doesn't want to get a ticket, I will talk to you offline on how to donate my our free ticket to whoever you want to bless. Um Thank you, Mika, for always coming. Being a blessing on. business. Dropping your jewels and your wisdom. I appreciate you. Yes. Did you call yes. me today, though? That was so funny. You said, I don't know, Deep Mika. <laughs> <laughs> that what really made me laugh. That, that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> you know, every now and then you just you gotta you gotta ground it for people, right? You, you gotta ground it and give people a glimpse at what's really happening because things get easily sensationalized. You're right. And we forget yeah. what we're really fighting for. So and I think I just that. thank you for, you know, changing my language. You like, you don't yeah. have a boss. You have a manager. Thank you for being receptive. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Cause that's I, a whole nother thing, right? Someone told me yesterday, uh, well, they weren't talking to me. They, um, I, I, I had I had to educate someone on on DMX because they just did okay. not understand the outpouring love and admiration for this just 
rapper. Okay. Right? <laughs> and so I gave a little 80s baby tutorial. <laughs> and uh, it's like, he's a, have you heard him pray? Like I just went in, right? And at the end, she's like, you know, always looking to learn. Someone asked me the other day how old I was. And I said, I'm um, never too old to learn. Okay. And I was like, I like that. Yes. I thought that was cool. See? Yeah, yeah because I feel like when people stuff. ask you, I feel um, like when people ask you how old they are, it's usually they taking a little bit of a jab. And you're like, what you hold on now? Right. Why? Why does that yeah. matter in this particular sure. conversation? Right. So right. I appreciate her answer. But you yeah. know, you know, the X-Man passing away has has prompted a lot of mixed feelings because per rapper status, you know, we have some some sexist lyrics right yeah. we have you know but yeah. this i'll share this i met him in person one time i feel like we can be very judgmental people all right and i will say this it's not it's not a right or wrong it's just my feelings only right it does not reflect the feelings of the sharing with shiny show <laughs> or anything else i'm connected to however comma <laughs> I understand human condition and I understand that when you feel a certain authenticity in somebody, you understand also if you truly understand addiction, mm -hmm. it'll help you figure out that just because people exhibit certain, you know, characteristics, it doesn't mean that we can't mourn their death. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, how was the, telling people how, was how the to feel? Experience meeting him, like, what, like, I thought you were gonna talk about that. I mean, what you see is what you what you saw is what you got for real. I mean, there's very few people you can say that about. Right. I was young, and you know, this was in my clubbing days. <laughs> this was in my clubbing days. <laughs> but I met all the rough riders, so. And it's, you know, Eve was like one of my favorite people. Just, she gave me the whole raw thing while being like real pritzy and stuff. Cause I was right. such a tomboy. I was just like, oh, I can rap and be like a pritzy girl, but I never right. really quite pulled it off. But yeah, I met, I met all of them um, right. briefly, but he actually like fostered conversation about, you know, just future. And I feel like that was all what was always present for him was his relationship with God. It was Absolutely. never, it was never, it was hidden. always on the forefront. I, right. It was always right. before us. And I think that's yeah. what people are recognizing. And that's also, what people are recognizing. Exactly. That's what people are recognizing. And also the fact that, you know, in that industry, um, how, how the, how we could do better. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't, hold each other until it's too late right right you know like yeah. you know when yeah. because it was acceptable when the records were being made and he, yeah. dri he drops two records and three movies in one year right mm -hmm. right you accept his addiction right? right very true but then when very true but when all but when the foreclosures start Mm -hmm. and the broken relationships start and and then there's this when you this thing. Mm -hmm. where was everybody mm -hmm. and so right. I, I definitely appreciated um russell simmons coming on and doing his little live saying how you know he he saved def jam and mm -hmm. he, he's saddened that def jam couldn't save him right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's big yeah so it's major very major so again but i also feel like anytime we lose a black man it's a devastation to the race yeah that's it, how it, i feel personally right so. and it, it's so and I, I feel like it's a reminder you know because i'm in this literary world and i i, I mm -hmm. think as of 2018 there were probably less than five percent and you might think that is that 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 number is like surprising less than 5% of black men's stories are in books, right? It's the, a, the representation wow. is very low, right? Yeah, that's a heavy number right there. Like that's a devastating number. Right. And so I, 
and, and I'm starting with the, the black men closest to me that have powerful testimonies mm-hmm. that, that goes, they, it goes back to Vivian's point about, you know, our gifts are not for us. Mm-hmm. A lot of times they're for somebody else. So mm-hmm. is our testimony. So right. is the stuff that we've been through, right? Yeah. yeah. Like that's not supposed to be kept private. Right, right. Like the fact that you came, you know, you, you got over Mm-hmm. you gotta share that right. right that's for god's glory exactly yeah somebody's gonna get saved by your story right that's why we do this show it's good stuff i don't do the show because i like to paint my eyebrows and wear the wrong foundation <laughs> that's not why i do this show. we're just gonna tell people you went on a great vacation that's what we're gonna tell people you look sun-kissed. Yep. Okay, because I look really, really wrong. <laughs> you don't look wrong. I was going to say, I don't think so. Wrong. She, I would have texted you like, I'm going to need you to turn your camera off and go handle that. You don't look wrong. <laughs> right, you it's said, noticeable to yeah, you because you yeah. live in your face, but nah, it's not. Because <laughs> you're definitely... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely honest because you was like scratch that you was like Skip. me <laughs> friends don't let friends show up bad Maybe. on zoom we right. just don't do that <laughs> Maybe right. i can't say i care back. about you <laughs> your conference is later this fall so we have yeah. to have you back after our summer hiatus the last okay. six weeks so you can push ticket sales or what Whatever the Share with Shawnee show has yeah. to do to make this conference be beyond your expectations, but give God oh, all the hey. glory, right? Yeah, we're gonna free. We're gonna free some women down in oh, absolutely. DFW, down in, the in the DFW. DFW. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank yeah, you. The Share with Shawnee show highlights ordinary people working for an extraordinary God. Sharing love, light, and life. We air every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live. The replay will be on our YouTube page in the next 24 hours. Next week. I can't wait for the outtakes. I don't even know which one to use. I think probably (laughs) Deep (laughs) Mika. I'm going to show up with that on my shirt next week. (laughs) Who am I today? Deep Mika. (laughs) Yes. Our special guest next week is <laughs> Carletta Herndon. Thank you. Uh-huh. God bless you and peace. Peace.